yeah, in this video, I've got a bit more of a fun video for you. So, I was planning on doing a list of boxing gear that you need, but I really couldn't come up with one other than the basics which you need for training anyway, which everyone really knows to be honest. If you don't, check out my boxing essentials video, it will tell you all you need to know. So yeah, I've decided to do a list of boxing gear that you don't need. So in this list, it's all stuff that's like a little bit extra, a little bit funny, but stuff that I still find useful to train in and enjoy using. Um, just freshens up your training again, gives you something to just relearn and adapt to. So while we're around, let's get on with it. At number one, we have a piece of gear that I've had for quite a while now, which is a balance board. Uh, with balance boards, there's a couple ways you can go. You can either get a hard wooden one, which is what I've got. They're a lot cheaper, they're smaller, they're easier to store. Or you can buy something like the half, I think they're called like inflatable balls, but like the half ones, and use them as a balance board. But again, they're, they're a lot more money and they take up a lot more space as well. But they're probably more effective slightly. I would say they're probably more sensitive to movement than a wooden one is. So wooden one eventually you wear like a little flat spot on the bottom. But uh, yeah, that's my opinion. So the reasons I love balance boards is they just liven up the training again and they what I find is they really work uh, the lower part of your calf slash your upper part of your ankle. Um, you definitely feel it there where you're controlling the balance. Uh, there's a bunch of exercises you can do on a balance board as well um, to train your balance obviously. You can do a little bit of shadow boxing on one leg, you can touch your toes, you can get some weights, do some weights while sat on a balance board. And it's really like, there's no point in talking about it too much because it is what it is. It's a balance board, that's what it's going to help you with, it's going to train your balance. And personally, I find them really useful. I think they do work. When you get a balance board and hop off it, you feel really, really stable. And especially for I think, injury prevention, I think they're actually massive for training those muscles that you don't train as much in your ankles, especially in boxing. It can be such a hard sport when you're you're moving in and out, you're pivoting and things like that. It's quite heavy in your ankles, hence why boxing boots usually have ankle support. So yeah, number one is a balance board. Number two is Olympic rings. I've had my Olympic rings for, it feels like forever now, probably about four or five years. I love them because A, they're cheap, and two, they last forever. You buy them once, you're pretty much done. And you also get great exercise out of them. So obviously you can do your pull-ups, you can do dips, you can do muscle-ups if you're there, and you can also hang from them and just do like leg raises. You can either do leg raises with your knees tucked or straight legs. You can do like the windscreen. It's just a great exercise, especially if you're bored, if you're just doing a, like a lot of burpees and that. All you need is something you can hang it from. If you've got a tree, you can do it off of that. And they're all great exercises as well. Working your core is massive for boxing again. Um, and also pull-ups in that. It's a great baseline exercise to be doing. It's a lot of control in your back, build a lot of muscle. And also it can build it in your arms, like your forearms get a workout from gripping the ring. And yeah, they're just a great exercise. I mean, if you ever see a gymnast that does Olympic rings, you see how ripped they are, they're absolutely jacked. So can't be bad for you at all. So that's my number two is Olympic rings. At number three, I have a classic pair of bag gloves. So when I say this, obviously, I have pictures up or videos up for you, is one of those old school, old school bag gloves where the pattern is like super thin, they, uh, they, they wrap around your hand, and usually like, their thumb's got no pattern at all. And again, this is just something fun, and it's, it's good for like your hand strength as well. If you struggle with your hands, building up a bit of conditioning with an old school pair of bag gloves can actually be really good for you. It sounds counterproductive, but the idea is that when you're punching a bag with bag gloves on, obviously you can still put wraps on if you want, you're having to punch a lot more accurately, you have to time your punches better, especially on the heavy bag, which is where you'll use them, to be honest. You can't go in full blast and pelt the bag. You're going to end up hurting yourself. So it forces you to work your punches, really focus on landing your punches well on your knuckles. Obviously, you lose knuckle protection, wrist support, and probably more that I haven't listed. By doing that, it really breaks you down, really makes you focus on your punches. And then as you get more and more confident with them, you can go a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder until you can throw like a full power punch. And if you can throw a full power punch in old school bag gloves, you're gonna punch hard as hell in real ones in my opinion. They, uh, they force you to really clench your fist down when you throw your punch. You gotta tense it down through your forearm to stop your wrist buckling. Whereas with standard gloves, you can get lazy, you can end up just flicking them out. But with old school bag gloves, you gotta work hard, you gotta think about your punches and again, it's not needed, by no means do you need to go out and buy an old school classic pair of bag gloves, but it's something extra you can do. If you've got all the equipment you really need, it's just something different that you can uh, mix it up with, get a different feel for it, and again, I think it's beneficial. There's a reason they used to do it in the olden days, and it's kind of phased out due to like protection and things like that, but I still think it's a useful tool, in my opinion. Number three, which is a bit on the pricey end, um, but you can get them cheap these days as well, is a massage gun. 
I have one, I use the, I believe it's the Theragun Mini. Uh, it's a great little tool, especially if you're getting back into training or if you're changing training slightly. I find if I'm training consistently, I'm doing the same sort of exercises, the muscle soreness dips right down and I feel pretty good. But as soon as you do something different, you change up your routine a bit. If you, for instance, buy a set of Olympic rings and start training on them a lot, you're going to find that different muscles are being activated. And by just using the massage gun for 15 minutes sort of thing after your session, I do find it really helps release the muscles up. It works like a massage, which is called, called massage gun, makes sense. Um, not really a lot more to say on them, other than, yeah, I do believe they work. Number five, and I think this is kind of like, maybe some people should have it, other people really can't be asked. Um, I'm probably in the middle, sometimes I like using them, sometimes I don't. And that's a training diary. So just having a diary that you can go along, jot down notes from your sessions, even if it's just like, personally, I like to keep like a sparring diary. So if I spar, I like to take down some notes from the session and then before my next sparring session, have a quick look back through the notes. So for instance, if I'm getting caught by an overhand right in the session and like I come out and think, yeah man, like he was nailing me without time after time. Then when I hop out, I'll write a little down, nail by your hand right or work counter and overhand right, something along those lines. And it just helps you refresh yourself before your next sparring session because there's countless times I'll come out of sparring session and write loads down. And then if I don't look for next session, I do it and I'm like, oh, I didn't check my notes. I go look at my notes and like whatever I've been beat up by that session in, chances are it was on my notes from the other week and I just haven't refreshed myself on them. Obviously, the more you train, the better you'll get. There'll be less notes to write down. But you can also use it for your exercises as well, if you if you like doing that sort of thing. I find it hard for boxing because we don't work in exact sets. Um, our fitness regimes are usually like a lot of circuit based things. You can write circuits down, but I find it's a lot of writing. I can't be asked for that. So a few short notes or if you do uh, a few exercises that you struggle on, write down a couple of those exercises, then sort of thing in between sessions, work on those exercises to build yourself up again. So yeah, number five is a training diary. And at number six, uh, I just have to throw this one in there, it's something that I love, and that's a massage roller, a foam roller, massage roller, foam roller, I don't know. You've heard me talk about them again and again and again, I absolutely love these bits of equipment, they do all sorts of foam rollers now, um, I would love to do a little review of a bunch of them at the same time, that'd be pretty cool. They're absolutely excellent pieces of equipment, um, even if you just use it for your back to start with, because they can be quite intense depending on what you get, but while on your back, you feel it all the way through your back, especially if you've been training, and once you stand up, you just feel absolutely a thousand times better, like your back was so much looser, it releases so much stiffness in you, um, I love it using it on my hamstrings, my quads, my calves, um, occasionally I'll use it for my, my triceps as well, and roll across them, Absolutely phenomenal bits of kit. I think absolutely everyone should own one. Uh, but I guess at the end of the day you don't need one, so that's why, why it's on this list. But I would highly, highly recommend one. They also do like collapsible ones now if you want one that you can keep in your gym bag. The little ones that shrink down, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. And you can also get complete other end of spectrum. You can buy like really expensive ones that have like cooling in them and vibrations that help work out knots and things like that. But yeah, have a little look, see what you think, guys. I'll leave uh, a few links in the description of different things you can get, um, different options for what I've put in this list. And hope you enjoyed it. It's something a little bit different. Obviously, it's not what you need, but uh, it's fun stuff to have, and I think it's useful at the end of the day. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys, and I'll catch you next time.